Hey everyone, I just want to go over a few word problems that involve rates and converting units. After inputting their weight into their fitness app, Taylor notices they can burn 700 calories an hour if they run 6 miles per hour, which is a light jog, or they can burn 415 calories per hour if they walk 4 miles an hour, which is a brisk walk. How long would Taylor have to walk to burn the same number of calories they can burn in 1.5 hours of running at 6 miles per hour? Okay, so just to highlight some key information here, um, we can burn 700 calories an hour if we are running and 450 calories an hour if we are walking. What we want to know is how long do I need to walk for so that I burn the same number of calories if I were to run for 1.5 hours. So what we need to do here first is figure out how many calories am I going to burn when I am running. So what I know is that when I am running, I burn 700 calories in one hour. And what I want to know is how many calories am I going to burn in 1.5 hours. Here what we're going to do is cross multiply and divide. So I'm going to go 1.5 times 700 and then I'm going to divide by 1. Of course dividing by 1 doesn't really change anything but again you can still do that. Here what you should get for your final answer is 1050 calories. Question I often get is can't I just multiply these two numbers together and then get to my final answer? Absolutely, of course. What that would look like is you would have 700 calories per hour, and then you're multiplying that by 1.5 hours. So the reason that you can just multiply these together is what you'll notice is that the units are going to be canceling. And so what we're going to be left with, with is an answer in calories, and all we're doing is multiplying those two numbers together, and that's where the 1,050 is coming from. So of course you can just multiply. Um, that's This is kind of called unit analysis, whereas the one that I've just done on the top is cross multiplying. Both of them work, so feel free to use whichever one you want. Your second step is that now that you know how many calories you've burned, you want to know how long do you have to walk so that you can burn this many calories. So our next setup is going to be that we have 415 calories, and this is per one hour. So this is how many calories I'm going to burn walking. Next, I'm going to set that up with my equivalent fraction. So I have 1,050 calories to burn, and I want to know how long is that going to take. So we'll cross multiply and divide. Again, I'm actually going to take away my x here. Um, we should be using a different variable. I've already used x, so let's use y. When I cross multiply, we'll go 1 multiplied by 1,050, and then we will divide by 415. What we will get there for an answer is 2.5. 5301, and that's going to be in hours. And that is our final answer there. Let's try another example. Event planners often have to order food based on how many people will be attending a particular event. Their next event is meant to have 300 people. They can order dessert squares in groups of 25. They are estimating that each person would eat two squares. How many groups of 25 should the planners order? Looking at the key information here, what we've got is that we have 300 people and we are estimating that each person is going to have two squares. What I'm going to do is multiply these two numbers together. So I'll have 300 people, and then I'm going to multiply by 2. And the unit here would be that I'm having squares per person. So the reason that we can multiply these two together is that the units will be cancelling. People and people are acting as units, and when we divide anything by itself, it cancels out. So here what we have is 300 times 2, which is of course is 600. And we're now left with an answer in squares. So we need 600 squares for this event. Next, what I can do is that I can't add, or I guess I can't um, order squares individually. I have to order them in groups of 25. So I'm going to go 600 squares. And what I'm going to divide that by is 25, because I can get 25 squares in each order. This is going to tell me how many orders I need. So when I go ahead and divide that, I get 24. And so I'm going to need 24 orders of 25 squares. So therefore, I need 24 orders. For the next part, suppose they want to overestimate by 5%. How many groups of 25 should the planners order now? So a lot of the time, even though if 300 people are going to an event, a lot of the time they'll overestimate just in case they have some other people show up that are unexpected. So let's say we have 300 people and we want to overestimate by 5%. So we're going to multiply that by 1.05. The reason I'm multiplying by this is the 1 is going to keep 100% of the people that I'm already including, which would be my 300, and then the 5 is acting as that extra 5%. When we multiply those together, what we get is 315. Next, what we want to do is then, if we have 315 people, how many squares do we need to order? So we'll have 315 people, and we're going to multiply that by 2, just like we did before, and that's going to be squares per people, or per person, I should say. 
And like before, people and people are canceling. And then multiplying that out, I get 630 squares. So then next what we want to do is go 630. And we're going to divide by 25, just like we did before. And 630 divided by 25 will give us 25.2. Of course, we can't have 25.2 orders. I need to go either 25 or 26. So just to make sure we have enough, we would therefore want 26 orders. One more example for today. My last example for today. Albertans can buy a four liter of milk for 578 Canadian dollars. New Yorkers can buy a gallon of milk for 394 American dollars. Who is purchasing milk at a better rate? Here, what I need for this question is I need the conversion between Canadian and US dollars. I decided to look at what the conversion is currently for today. And this is what we got. Uh, one Canadian dollar is going to be equal to 71 cents American, which is um, not a great exchange rate, but here we are. Um, and then our other conversion that we're going to need to be able to do is to convert between gallons and liters. So one gallon is equal to about 3.79 liters. First, what I want to start with is that if they can buy one gallon of milk, for 394, they can buy 3.79 liters for $3.94. So what we really need to do here is figure out, okay, well, how much are they paying for, or how much would they pay for four liters of milk so that I can compare that to the Canadian price. And then afterwards, we're going to have to convert that from US dollars to Canadian dollars. So let's set up our conversions. So 3.79 liters will cost 394. What we want to know is how much is it going to cost for four liters? Let's cross multiply and divide. So here we'll go 3.94 multiplied by four, and then we'll divide by 3.79. When we put that into our calculators, what we're going to get here is, and I'm going to round to the nearest cent. So we're going to get $4.00 and 16 cents. Okay, this is now of course in US dollars. I need to convert that into Canadian dollars. So let's use my first conversion. So one Canadian dollar is the same as 71 US dollars. What I wanna convert is how many Canadian dollars is $4.16 US. Let's plug that in and see what we get. Again here, my usual habit, I want to use a different variable other than X. Let's switch that to Y. So Y equals. All right, let's plug it in. What we're going to get here, and of course the cross multiplying on this one, we're going to go 4.16 multiplied by 1 and then divide by 0 0.71. What I'm getting is $5.86. So who's getting the better price? So when we compare this, I can, in, in Alberta, I can go and buy a four liter of milk for $5.78. If I was in the US and I was in New York, I would buy the same four liters of milk for $5.86. So in this question, Albertans are actually getting a better price for milk. And then we're done. Uh, let me know if you have any more questions. Um, I really like doing word problems that involve rates and conversions. I think it's just kind of interesting and fun. There's a lot of different word problems that we can do with this. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, if you need any help. Have a good day.